So, a reminder, uh, from the last couple of videos I actually did and created, one of the things that I noticed was that it looked like I was attacking a specific relationship. And I'm saying this from my point of view, not anyone ever said anything or addressed it. So when it comes to dating out, interracial relations, and all like that, I do not have an issue with that in particular because I know how relationships function. At the end of the day, if you do the work, you get the reward. If you don't do the work, then you get nothing. Now, whether or not the community supports you or not is a factor that does affect most relations and relationships, as well as uh, whether or not you have money and support. And it may not just be from the community, it could be other things like from uh, just society. In particular, what the main reason why I'm addressing uh, the whole divestment thing is people like Cynthia G, who come out and every time there's something negative to say about black men, they do that. Now you see here, I typed in Manosphere Cynthia G because I was hoping to see whether anyone, not in the black Manosphere, but in the Manosphere in general, actually addresses people like Cynthia G. And from what I'm seeing, no, most do not. The Manosphere is dead. If so, should it stay that way? Now, first of all, the Manosphere is not even dead. But, you know, they tried to put it down with... Uh, at the end of the day, they tried to put it down with Kevin Samus because he was doing the right thing. Now, in his death, they're actually saying... Improving basically what happened. Um... I don't know why Kevin Samuels is in this picture. Uh, and since it's an hour thing, if they cut it up, maybe. But obviously, this is hype. Now, the whole thing with the whole house Negro thing and things like that, it relates to the relates to the political aspect that they're trying to bring out in that side of it. And they're trying to address that. You know, they're saying at the end of the day, because within uh let's not even call it a movement let's just call it a corner within that they're saying uh the political aspect but i don't see why uh Kevin samuels is in this i don't understand why he's in this in particular it doesn't make any sense to me in the slightest uh so for them to have him in there it's really because he was headlining and this is why all the people as you can see who supports energy and stuff keep putting kevin samuels in it now, nothing Kevin Samuels did actually just straight up pointed out to women uh, being a problem. He pointed out what men were doing wrong and what women were doing wrong. However, it was that a lot of women did not want to hear what he had to say in regards to what was going on. And what we were being held accountable for at the end of the day was the results, whether or not things went right or whether or not things went wrong. And it's stupid because at the end of the day the women the black women who have everything negative to say about the black men and this that, and the other who are on this type of game it falls apart when we consider certain information like with ralph richard banks what do you say makes sense until you consider the birth rate like many men in the black community i have the same father like we we have the same fathers and the reason why we have the same fathers is because it wasn't that women weren't Having, we're not having sex. It wasn't like the race was going to be in trouble if we didn't uh, marry black women. No, the black women were rewarding men with children <laughs> based off of looks and hypergamy. And the end result is that things have went astray. Men understood like there's no point in me marrying a woman if she's going to have kids by someone else and hold me to a different standard than someone she finds actually attractive. It it, it was as Kevin Samuels would say, it, it costs too much. It would cost too much as a man to invest into a woman who at the end of the day subscribed to a different type of mindset. This is no different. So, yeah. A different perspective. They hate us. Straight mocking, roasting the manosphere. Uh, this dude's leaving the manosphere and for that, I kind of sort of understand um, and at the end of the day, as I said, for me in particular, one of the reasons why I said I'm not going to be within it is because certain creators within Manosphere are subscribing to certain ideas and there is a political aspect. I said that. I called it out on it. 
And that's something that the manosphere needs to get straight instead of just pulling a whataboutism. But is their content um, reliable? It's reliable as long as they stick to the facts. They can't function like the women do, and that's where they fall apart. So, yeah, it, it, like he even pointed out, O'Shea, yeah, he's he's uh, he does the hardest work, well, probably one of the hardest workers in there, but he gets very dramatic. He gets very political at times. He gets... There's one time when there was uh, propaganda out about Biden, and I don't, I don't kiss political butt, but the propaganda was wrong. And he said the reason why he was addressing propaganda was because it endangered the community. So when you're wrong, so when you're wrong, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you address it? He didn't do that. And he put stated it on the community, but, you know, he gets paid for that. Gen Z men, wow, they are attacking Gen Z men any way possible. But I don't get that. I, I, I don't know, and I haven't reacted to or watched really any videos on it. Angry man tell the honest truth about the incel manosphere. And as you can kind of see, it's a woman in that one. And, and here's the thing. When these same women hit 30, Let's see if they keep it up. Because right now, they are more focused on controlling sex in the market, and I'm going to do a video on that. But since dating is diminishing, it means that sex as well as incentive for sex is diminishing. And that's really kind of all they have aside from bad talking men. So once that falls apart, it falls apart. But yeah, I don't really see any... <laughs> I don't really see any men... Uh, in the manosphere, just in general, talking about what? Let's see, approved the lead attorney. And this is the thing: you get more detractors just from uh, talking bad about people like the lead attorney and stuff like that. So, yeah. But again, you kind of see it though. Um, Wait, wait, wait. The truth and wants of the manosphere. They are literally, and this is why, again, it's better to just detail the truth rather than try to dive into the whole feminist thing and talk about this. The truths and wants. Let's be honest here. Years ago, years ago, during the 60s, women did use to respect men more. As they have gained more, um, so have their standards. The problem with that is, in general, is that every other community that isn't catering to women is doing fine. They have their kinks, they have their issues, but every time a, a community caters to women, then they do bad. And here we have, in the Black community, where Black men have catered to Black women, they're still talking bad about Black men. And this is before the manosphere. This is literally before the manosphere. Again, time kind of destroys things like this but none of the manosphere actually talked about it and that's why i said when it comes to addressing things like the whole divestment thing this that and the other as a black man i have to i have to because it's so much lies and stuff put out and what i really fear is undeveloped minds, minds thinking this is true because on the other end you, you don't think this isn't doing any damage now uh, this negative talk about men is doing any damage? No, they don't care. Wait, the FBI takedown of the men? That is eight, <laughs> 86 k views off of a lie. They didn't take down the manosphere. Also, if that's the case, whenever a feminist goes to jail for something, it'll be blown up. But yeah, I'm gonna be honest, the political aspects of the manosphere is, and the black manosphere is why I'm just reacting to their content. However, I don't believe any of the lies that they're putting out there about it because you had me until you're willing to lie about people like Kevin Sanders, to willing to lie about other people. And there are people who come behind f with factual information like they were saying, Kevin Sanders died broke. You don't have access to his money. The most smart men are going to guide their money. So where did you come up with this narrative based off of what? But at the end of the day, this is how the rich get richer and the poor get poor because 
it, it's not gonna the influence of the master is not gonna die it's not gonna die with kevin samus because it's believe in yourself believe in the nihilism and move forward or subscribe to ideas that give you to spend money on women who don't care about you and the bigger takeaway is honestly at the end of the day that we see that ultimately ultimately none of these women who you actually simp for do this that, and the other actually respect you no simping has ever produced results in which both men and women go forward and produce in fact that's why i'm on this whole divestment thing because at the end of the day it shows that they don't like the results that they produced from the female-led black community so they're willing to go into other communities where the options are better orders more money but the reason why they have more money is because they subscribe to ide ideas and ideologies that were conservative so yeah it, it, it kind of you know the the women conservative ideologies where the women did what they were supposed to do so that, that's kind of weird when you look at it that way anyway it was just i had to address that and i had to show for example because yeah i'm not seeing any of them really uh address this and you know kevin samuels could have spent all of his time ripping apart people like cynthia g but he stuck to the facts and he addressed certain issues so yeah it wasn't a smoke show as in lights and mirrors he was like no come at me and the fact that i never saw any of these women come on kevin samuels show said everything that i need to know about it because whether they believed or not they could have came on his show and addressed it they could have said x y and z but they didn't there's more lies about a man who's dead than anything else so again addressing why this is a black man's burden and why i have to address it and why it ties into talking about divestment and then interracial relations so that's all that's why i had to talk about it probably not the best thing to search here let me try And there's O'Shea again. Let me try my songs me the minister after me. What? This is the type of stuff they put out. Like, how did they silence her? Like, it, it's online. How could they silence her? Like, we don't have ninjas and people like that in the background. And most men are looking out for their own nut rather than the community. So... It's not like they're coming after her like that, so that's a lie. But um, re reproductive coercion? What? Okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I back past that. Hold on. <laughs> reproductive coercion. How? Hypergamy is not reproductive coercion. So it's, um, let me see. The real issue is that it's happening in our community, but not many people talk about it. You see, they keep trying to sell themselves as the underdog. They're not the underdog. Again, the birth rate and who the baby's father is destroys a lot of this conversation. When we get on, uh, again, okay, I'm gonna use me as a point. My dad is six foot four and comes from a family of tall men. All of those men have multiple baby mothers and have over four kids. They wanted to have sex with this guy. There's no coercion in it. They're trying to say hypergamy is coercion. That doesn't make any sense. My dad was also attractive. And so was his side of the family. Most of them had that. So no one tricked anyone. So that's kind of scary to me. That, that's actually kind of scary. But yeah, all these lies, it's not even the lies. It's the views and the stuff that they try to come out and say. Hashtag went home and yeah, it's no one's actually talking about that.
<sighs> the biggest takeaway for me is that yeah it's that at the end of the day wait wait, wait the black man's girl compares themselves to black women no the hell they don't that's what i'm saying some of the stuff is crazy they're not comparing them in a sense if anything they're saying what should be and what's supposed to be because like that's what we're held accountable for again the hypergamy kind of resets this and uh occam's razor in hypergamy is to use height for example do most black women respond to height? Do most women respond to height? Yeah, they do. Okay, then use that to determine whether or not they're dating us by looks, by specific genetics and stuff like that, or whether they want to actually be with us for a community. That's, and I'm, I'm just seeing like this stuff, it seems really stupid. It seems really dumb. Like, all you can do is stay at a course because here's what happens. We go outside the black community and if you do the right thing, there are women who actually want you. In the black community, they're feeding into this because there's a silent agreement with the open market. Uh, there's a silent agreement with uh, consumerism. The, the more we spend helplessly and like an idiot on uh, people who don't care about us, and, uh, includes black women because they're conditional uh the more the market feeds but you know that's why like dating is dying that's why relationships are dying that's why men are starting to go their own way regardless and really it's the pr problem of the manosphere as well as the fact that they do have hard uh republican ties that is actually destroying them but aside from that you know nothing they've said is wrong so yeah